that if they're lucky, like I am, one day they will get to being 65 or 75 or 85 and they may have different interests from the ones that they have now. So a town must cater for its whole age range, not just for the young. Thank you. Just because the meeting is not until today, um, yeah, we're going to run it on a bit. People, people have turned out. I, I take the point about the dead PowerPoint, but to be fair, just the tip point about the presentation, if we didn't give you the facts, then there'd be people howling you giving the facts. We've given you the facts because we've given you too many facts. But would people generally find it useful? Now you've had the presentations and you can take away and read them. More of a narrative meeting in the future, more of a debate. Yes, sir. Yes. We, we, could, we could look to sort something out uh, about that. Can I just, Bill? Sorry, just, just, just briefly. Just briefly to say, I mean, two points. Bill's made two points about let's try and get the sense of the context, because without the context, and the, the reality, none of this makes sense. I think the cabinet have gone mad su suggesting these, these changes. The, the financial, that's why the financial context is so important. You make the point about Middlesbrough, the library, the library I'm very familiar with. Um, what I'd simply say is that we, as we understand it, we're one of the first authorities in the country to take seriously what the government is saying about what will happen to grant between now and 2019 2030, and we are planning accordingly. We are one of the few that have done that. Not Middlesbrough, as I understand it, have not done that. What the future of locals, they're making cuts year on year, as you see them on the television. I'm not aware they're making planning for the next four years. Now, what the impact on the, uh, the, the, the library uh, in Victoria Square will be, I don't know, for, for Middlesbrough. What I'm saying is the reason why this is hitting Darlington is because we're trying to debate and, and, and shape a budget that will see the services on which we all depend and learn through between now and 2019 and 2020. What you make about there are a number of you know, knock-on effects, you quite right, for other groups who may already have been affected by previous uh, proposals, for example, as our centre is concerned. What I would appeal, therefore, that's one of the purposes of the session next Wednesday, the session next Wednesday, is how can people who use, whether it's Crown Street, whether it's Mobile Library, or whether it's Boston Library, you know, how can, if the decision is taken to move the library, how can we shape that library for the future so that it incorporates the needs of the, of the, the diverse user groups that use the main library at the moment. So that is something we want to hear from the people of Darlington uh, about, if that proposal goes ahead. Hello, uh, I'm Heather Carter from Darlington for Culture. Uh, I don't think I can be nearly as eloquent as Marilyn. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, we all know that actually libraries are much more than the sum of how many books are borrowed and it's obvious tonight that the libraries uh, feel, people feel very strongly about keeping the libraries. Uh, we welcome Nick's um, feedback that he is prepared to consider alternatives. Our problem is that uh, we're already talking about a consultation next week to talk about how we actually move the library and how we make the best of it. We know that to have significant conversations about alternatives, the main factor that we need is time. We've obviously got the willingness in the town, we've got the expertise, we've got the knowledge, we've got many people who want to help and want to keep the libraries where they are and sustain the services, but what we haven't appeared to God to have is time. So what we're asking for is to not be given days or even weeks, but we're going to need much longer than that to come together to have a sustainable, future, secure service for our libraries. And bearing in mind that we're talking about £1.7 million to move and decimate the library service, uh, I'm sure it's actually worth uh, us investing some time in keeping the library service where it is and enabling it to grow and thrive for Marilyn's uh, 85th birthday. Thank you. Uh, Norman Wilkin, can I be assured that 
next Wednesday's meeting will be concerned only with the library service, because tonight will be very useful to hear all about the uh, points and the financial problems of the council, but this was advertised as a library event, and next Wednesday is advertised, it says, and in addition, and in addition you'll be cabinet members. I can, can I be assured that next Wednesday's meeting by the here or incompetent will be concerned solely with the library, not allotments or social housing or children's services? Can I have that assurance? Absolutely, and I will be joined by uh, officers who are doing the work on, on the libraries responsible for the operation of the libraries. So I hope this has been informed, and it will be even more informed. And, and there will also be plans and an opportunity for, for further debate. Oh, I've been to uh, a few years with the I've been to several of these meetings. I've never seen anything change as a result of those meetings. Um, and there was a general feeling that these are presentations of facts of what is happening rather than consultations. Have you any comment? We, we've never made a secret of the financial position we're in, and in each of those presentations, we have made plain that there is very little wiggle room. We, it's not fair to say that things haven't been altered after consultation. We, we have done some stuff, but by and large, the big bricks in the building are relatively cast in stone. As you've seen, a big chunk of our spending, adult social services, if that catches the full rest of the council budget freezes. So, we have done what we, what we can, we have moved where uh, the public have made uh, points, but that's not possible on all terms. And I think, you know, if you bear to the cabinet, they've been absolutely honest about uh, where there is wiggle room and where there isn't, and why there isn't, if there isn't. Bill, could I just briefly yeah. come back on the point that was made about, um, about time steps uh, and about when the consultation on this closes in June? I mean, having, you know, regrettably, we spent the last five years talking about reductions in retrenchments and reconfiguring services. And if we come to, if we have come with a fully worked through, fully costed uh, plan in every line of detail, we've been accused of, it's all sorted out. And if we come with a plan that still is evolving, then you've not sort of put all the bricks in place and you've not sort of thought it through. So this is work in progress as it is across, across many portfolios. I don't agree with you using the word decimate. This isn't about decimating a library service. This is about a reconfigured service within the Dolphin Centre, a different building, but actually many of the core functions uh, and in terms of floor space, it actually would look very similar. But I appreciate how attached people of Darlington we all are to the building in which uh, it, it sits at the moment. The difficulty of letting things run on is that there is a, there's a financial element to that too. These proposals are. Some of the proposals that we have here are controlled by the local authorities. So when the council says, you know, after making the decision, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, that happens. One of those, for example, is the library service because it's controlled by the council. And so whatever happens, it, it happens. Other ones of these suggestions, for example, in adult care and, and children's social care, uh, you rely on people's behaviour, on circumstances that are not controlled by the local authority. There is a significant amount of risk that the savings that have been identified in good faith by professional officers that both uh, uh, Veronica and, and City would, would say this evening can't be realised. You know, children going in to look after, look after care, you know, tens of thousands of pounds that maybe you weren't banking upon. So there's, there is an absolute imperative for this budget to hold together, to do matters as soon as possible. That's why putting off and putting off and putting off decisions would be a false economy, and that's why we have a tight timescale we're trying to stick to. Well, one of the things I play I hear, uh, as a line to say we're planning to do things when we switch to later on. Um, I hear you say that the, the head of steam should be kept because it's history. But at the same time I'm hearing that you want to get rid of the library, which is probably being knocked down, and the indoor and outdoor markets but you're getting rid of some of your history at the same time. You know, either you want your history or you don't. The head of steam is history, so are the other buildings. The Francis Library is a historic building, created by the people of Darlington, it is also a great 
to listed building. Many, when you go to towns and villages, many buildings that serve a particular function and now serve a different function because time moves on and because needs change, services change, and so those services or those functions are provided elsewhere, the old rectory, the old post office, the old this, the old that. Time, time does move on. That building is grade two listed and will remain, whatever it's, if this proposal goes ahead, whatever its function will be in the future, it has to remain because it is so well preserved. According to the report I saw, you're going to spend two million pounds, just under two million pounds total, in moving the library from the end of the for a saving of three hundred and sixty thousand pounds per year. And what? Right? That two million pounds is to be paid back over twenty-five years. You're going to make the savings in in five or six years. Where's the sense? You're spending two million pounds in the future to move something from where it is that's doing the job it's doing down to a building that isn't going to do the same job. It doesn't have the same feeling. The reason I wanted to come back was because you mentioned that you used the word two million several times. It's 1.1 million pounds, not two million pounds. And as you will have gathered from the presentation that was given this evening, the critical difficulty of the local authority has is revenue. It's the revenue because the grant has been cut. It's the year-on-year -year spend because local authorities, wherever they are, are people businesses. And mostly in staffing, in the frontline staff and other staff, support staff, that need to maintain them. So this solves a helps part of the solution, if it goes ahead, to solve the revenue problem that the local authority has to pay for the other services that we have. I'm conscious that people start to have to have them spoken twice, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call people who haven't spoken yet, so that everybody gets a chance. Guy that down and have a look. My name's Ian, and uh, I've lived in New York, down a lonely life, nearly all right. Yeah. Sorry. My name's Ian, and I've lived in down a lonely life. I've just got two questions for you. I'm well used to this town at the back of my hand. And then um, my first question is. How much did you pay Peter Barron, the editor of the Northern Echo, to step down with all this going on since he was at the council? And the second one is, you know the uh, cinema site getting built and the Woolen Mill is going to be called the new pub. Why don't you change that to something very more apt, like a corrupt councillor, because it would make a lot more sense to me. Thanks very much. Make it public, our solicitors are down there. Um, the lid. Uh, I'm Jennifer, I'm an ex library worker. I've been retired for 10 years. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Good, good. Um, I'm kind of encouraged by what's happened in the last few days. I followed this through from when it came to analyse early February. And we were so grateful to Dolly Tuff Kutcher and John Dean for, 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 you know, giving us a bit of hope because every day you're up, you're down, it seems crazy. To me, it sounded like a done deal, and I thought, we can't do anything, but we can. We surely can. I've jotted notes to myself. You know what I like today? I read the, um, you know, the job issue with the Northern Echo. It's telling us about somebody's bought the corn milk, is it New River? Yeah. Right? And they paid, I don't know how much money it has, I can't remember. But it sounds encouraging that they take, in, you know, into the sort of their plan the rest of the town, not just the corn mill, we're going to look at that and I think, ah, oh, we might have an answer here. It would be a chance for them to look at our dear library and see what can be done. It hasn't had any sense of value given to it. We don't. The library doesn't make money. It does if people keep the books over to you. But you can renew so easily over the internet, etc. But we don't want to lose that library. To me, it's more to do with communication. 
It's a place for people to come. People have donated where the staff get to know those people. And to me, it's, um, that's such a value. It's a place to go and talk face to face with someone. I like to go to a bank or building society when I have someone to guide me. Um, as a member of the library staff, we were people who signposted. You could get a person coming through the door, maybe for a book, to tell you a bit more about what they want, what they're pursuing, what their hobby is, what they're, you know, they maybe have an illness, and you point them in directions. Because we were trained to know what happens in the council to point them in directions. We became put back, you know, dying to borough council in 1997, became a borough in their own right. And at the library, we were very proud of that. We belonged to Darlington again, after being part of Durham County Library, which worked, yes, but we were just a small branch library, a spark in a big, you know, big concern. Sorry, I'm a little bit slow, but I'm getting on with it. Um, you say, yes, I know libraries are closing throughout the country, but they, they can afford to do this because they have lots of libraries, branch libraries, which is very sad when they lose them. Darlington has never been really, you know, we haven't. We've had a main library, which is great. We got one branch library at Cockerton. As a result, I was on the mobile library at the time in the 70s, and that was the busiest place. But there were many busy, busy um, mobile sites in Darlington on all the estates. But Cockerton was chosen, and that's going to be taken away. I'm a little bit upset about the mobile library because it does cover the borough of Darlington covers villages. Don't we have a duty for people in those villages paying council tax? Like our high council taxes are the bus services that are atrocious. They deserve that mobile. I'm proud of my mobile library. A library, I want it to be a, a community hub. That's as I see it, Crown Street. I want it to be promoted and looked. I'm sure everybody keeps it there. One Darlington. Where does it mention Darlington? Library, under the culture bit. It doesn't. That, I couldn't understand that. Um, and now, what is it healthy England? We've been chosen as part of one of the ten towns in, in England. We, you know, the library within that healthy minds. Okay, uh, I'll just, you know, I'll think I'll just go to the next one. I think, I think probably you talked about Durham County, I think it was at the time when the old borough went into the new Durham County that uh, the original uh, affidavit or the original deeds were, were, were lost, this, this is regrettable, it was, it was some time ago. We continue to be in contact with, we are talking to the Peace family because clearly the future of the building because of the, the Peace connection because it was donated uh, by the Peaces. Is of interest and we want to hear their views and we want to hear uh, other people's views. Doesn't mean that that's an insurmountable roadblock to moving the library in the future, but it's certainly something worth considering. Oh, well, we didn't have very nervous and that business person. Not out of the group, I just live here. I love here because I love the town. Got the kids here, I still love the town, right? That's all I have. However, I've lived on a budget all the time, I've lived here, so not about budgets and money. And this meeting's been all about budgets and money. What about hearts and humanity and people? And what makes this town the place that makes me want to move here? Yeah? That's just out an introduction, what I want to say. That's all. I'm just a resident, right? I'm not anybody important. But I just want to make a few brief points before I go. I've never been in a meeting before, I was. It's obvious. 
privilege that many of these the post cups, and I've learnt a lot tonight, it's been very good. They're all aimed at areas and services where there's a genuine need, and I've included the library and all that goes on in Crown Street Library as part of that need. I need it for a start. And um, I think I suggest that oh, the need will still be there after you've made all these so called savings. And I suggest that these will emerge as charges somewhere else and costs, the need will not go away. So you may be making savings, but they'll just pop up as charges and costs somewhere else, I think. And I think most people feel they would be sensible to keep what's working, what we love, find a way to run it in a more thrifty way and not diminish services or replace them with something that's substandard in a place that's not fit for purpose, like putting a library in a swimming bath. What? You know, I just can't believe it, it's breaking my heart. And I, I just can't believe that could happen here because it's a good town and you're good people. And I think the cabinet have got heart and they've done all for the town. And they've tried so they've made mistakes, but everybody makes mistakes, right? You know, we're all human, but please don't make any more mistakes, you guys. Heart, you know? adults in particular, people who use the library, uh, because there's something about a Victoria library, the smell, the books, the, 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 the whole ambiance uh, there, uh, places where we have, you know, we've grown up. I wasn't, I've only been in Dallas for maybe 30 years, but the library, the library where I was brought up, I spent hundreds of hours there, it's a very important uh, place. Uh, so we will bear that in, that is, you know, the figure of consultation, we are bearing that in mind, that your contribution will be recognised. But simply to say, you know, we're not looking at this in isolation. Darlton isn't the only place that's looking at relocating services. So looking at other places where libraries have been relocated, main libraries have been relocated to, whether it's leisure centres or other hubs, I've got Stockton, Redcliffe, Durham, Liverpool, Gateshead, Manchester, Doncaster, South and you know, there, are, there are others. This is something which is, good, which is happening elsewhere as local authorities are looking to make the best of the limited resources that they have. Where's the heart in that, you ask? And I entirely take that point, but there, as you will have heard, there's, there's an awful lot of bean counting that has to, happen, has to happen to ensure that the local authority will be so that we can continue to provide the services to the most vulnerable. Is there anybody who hasn't spoken in the last you spoke about it. Okay, yeah, there we go. Sorry, don't, don't. I'm Dorothy Dodds, a resident of Darlington. I've used the library all my life and um, I find it a really vibrant place, even though it's a place of contemplation, I do find it vibrant. And over the past few years, um, taking an example of the art gallery, it's been used a lot more than what it was before and uh, community groups have been able to uh, put their work up there, which is a real um, bonus for Darlington. What's going to happen to the space for the art gallery and what's going to happen for all the archives that's in the library. Well, the art was just first because sorry, go The then um, yeah sorry I thought you spoke before. Um, <laughs> I really feel very strongly about what Darlington Council has done to Darlington. Over the years it has been completely destroyed. Why is the market still in the marketplace? Why, why are you building new cinemas, new car parks, when there's a cinema in Northgate that's uh, surely going to close? I live in Northgate, I'm in Northgate, and it's a disgusting. You're talking about uh, reducing street scene, street cleaning? I don't think so. If you look, around the back streets and the areas of Darlington, it's just beautiful. 
I am always on the floor because it's not just, I'm not complaining about the county cleaning, I'm complaining about the, the people who actually discard their rubbish. And just leave it up to other people to pick up. But I really feel very strongly about what has happened to this poor town. It was a beautiful, beautiful town. And the, the, the <coughs> if you go down this, in, into the town and the shopping day, it's deserted. And what on earth have you done to it? Can and what are you spending your money on? And what valuable money is it now that you are getting? Time centres, uh, I'll change it. In fact, I, mean, I always often find like, a number of people who come from outside Wellington and choose to live here because I fell in love with the place when I was about 25 years old or what's up. So probably the same journey you're talking about, walking up North Gate, uh, down looking at the vista with, with, uh, with Buckhouse's Bank, and I thought, wow, what a fantastic place. And I, I fell in love with the place, I've lived here, brought my family up here. I think it's a, a smashing place in which to live. But the um, town centres are changing. You know, the internet is changing now, so town is changing now. That's why we need initiatives like a multi-pack cinema and a car park and restaurants to bring people into town to keep the town centre vibrant. That's the duty of your local authority, working with traders and working with others to ensure the economy of the town centre is as vibrant as possible. Continuing with the use of the word vibrant, no one's doubting that Crown Street is a vibrant and a great place to be. This, is, this proposal is not a criticism of Crown Street Library, and you're absolutely right. Although people predicted doom and gloom when the arts, the art gallery was moved away from uh, the uh, art centre to uh, town. Actually, it's been hugely successful. There's far more footfall in the art gallery now than we, than we ever did before. But this is a proposal which is driven, you know, someone called it the Council of Despair, driven by the num numbers. It's not a proposal the local authority would have come forward with had we not found ourselves across the piece in so many areas uh, trying to balance books. But there is an opportunity, potentially, to create something different and maybe something better in the Dolphin Centre, but we still want to hear what people's views uh, are on that. And so just quickly, market in the marketplace, I think was raised, the reason why the open market is no longer in the marketplace is because the open market traders don't want to be there. They want to be on Northgate, they want to be on the high road. If we try to make corral them back onto the marketplace, they wouldn't come. I'm just uh, about to know what's the uh, situation about the city of the Vice Bureau of the Darlington and um, what's being proposed for that. There's no proposal in particular for citizens and Vice Bureau. The citizens and Vice Bureau were in receipt of a strategic grant which was um, <coughs> carried over to currently. That street strategic grant will end, and um, that's only one small part of citizens' advice funding. They say it's going to be a significant part, and we have to explore that to see to see what that means. Um, and as I said previously, we are proposing to put an extra fifty thousand pounds back in, um, back in to welfare benefit and welfare advice. And I'm not going to say the citizens' advice were, would be the recipients of that yet, because that's something that still has to be discussed. But that will be covered in the later on discussion. Any changes to be made? Yes.